So my role name is Cardiac Physiology and that's predominantly in the uh, public service NHS. Essentially we're involved with direct patient contact in diagnosing and treating heart disease from say a newborn all the way to the elderly. I got into cardiac physiology because I enjoyed learning about the heart the most during the, the schooling years and I felt I understand, understood it the most as well. And then when I got here that was reinforced because you're surrounded by sort of heart studies and, and people who are specially interested in the physiology of the heart and I understood that quite well and, and, and I enjoy the patient contact a lot. And it's quite good to see sort of instant gratification in a way that once you've treated the patient in the sector that we work in, you get an instant result and, and that's quite rewarding. Studying cardiac physiology, you're already at a quite kind of an advantage uh, in terms of employability because you're immersed into clinical practice early on, i.e. from the first year, and the immersion to, to practice is increasingly uh, growing in first, second and third year. So by third year, you're predominantly in practice and, and you, you kind of already know what is expected of you as a cardiac physiologist and you're not in the unknown. You've been in there for the past two years. So employability is, is kind of dependent on how you do in your placement years and what kind of an impact you have on that department. And it may be that they offer you a job and most often they do offer you a job because they see that you're clinically competent and able. In echocardiography, we image the heart, you see the heart chambers pumping and the valves opening and closing and you would obviously diagnose heart problems that way too. When you take the principles of that and you uh, apply it to other tests that we do, it really sort of reinforces the things you already know and how uh, disease processes work and it's kind of a two-way approach. Uh, it kind of paints a full picture as to what's going on in that heart. Of course, ha having sort of in-depth knowledge about one particular area, uh, sp specifically to the heart, specifically to the adult heart, you're at an advantaged position in, in that a lot of people will ask you for advice and you're the specialist in that area, so uh, any sort of anatomy and physiology of the heart, you are the go-to person. Um, in, the doctors and the other sort of multidisciplinary team are also involved in that, but you have a unique view of the physiology of the heart. So some of the traits I think a cardiac physiologist should possess is uh, one of the most important one is able to work within a team effectively. If you're able to work in a team, you're also, you should also be able to communicate effectively in, in a way that is uh, respecting the patient as well as your colleagues. And secondly, I would say uh, leadership is, is, is somewhat important uh, if you wish to go further in this field. I think effective leadership is key to having a, a good working relationship with your colleagues and your uh, uh, subordinates. For me personally, I found it uh, fairly easy to find work, um, particularly because for my final year placement, I was placed at the Leeds General Infirmary. I think as long as you can set a good example of uh, how a student should be and the enthusiasm is there and the opportunity for a job is there, of course, that's one of the most important things, uh, you would be offered a job um, straight after graduation. Placements are very important as part of the course and, and I, I would always say any sort of clinical uh, vocational degree that is uh, included in universities should always encompass some clinical placement. The course directors have very close links with all the clinical placements that any student could be placed in, so given their working relationship in the past with those departments, put the student at good stead to finding a job after graduation. So all the materials taught on the course is the theoretical underpinning of all the practices that you would do as a cardiac physiologist. So essentially we are taking the theories and principles of cardiac physiology and applying them in a way that treats the patient and looks at the patient and diagnoses the patient. I would say having one scientific A-level is definitely desirable. I think you have a not a head start, but you, you, you are a little bit more advantaged than various other students who might have an arts background, for example. Because I think in the first year, the idea is that the, you know, a group of students across the UK come, to, come together and the university's idea is to bring them to the same level, give them the same start, and then from second and third year, that's when you really develop your clinical and scientific skills.